Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. I am so excited for today's video because I am going to get in contact with one of my local bookshops and ask them to recommend me my next reads. The bookshop I'm going to be getting in contact with is Mr B's Emporium which is in Bath. It's a gorgeous bookshop which I included in a recent vlog where I went around a few different bookshops in Bath. Definitely was my favourite one that I went to and I actually got the idea to do this because Camilla in my comments of that video told me they actually provide this service called a reading spa which I'd never heard of and basically you pay £105 I think it is, let me double check that. So it's £105 for this reading spa but within that cost is included a £60 book voucher so you'll be getting books included in that price. You go in and you sit down with one of the booksellers there and you have tea or coffee with them and talk through your reading tastes and what you're into, what you're looking for and they will hand pick selections for you to look at. I think this is a really popular service that they offer and it's one of the reasons I loved going into that bookshop. I mentioned in the vlog that I did when me and my husband Alex went in you just could immediately hear booksellers talking to customers in a really in-depth knowledgeable personal way. It all felt very genuine and like a tailored experience for every customer. I didn't talk to anyone because I am shy but I could hear from eavesdropping on little conversations that they are so happy to give recommendations and like they take a lot of pride in their work. Now, like I said, these are really popular. It says on the site that the current waiting list is like around nine months. And I also don't have £105 to spend right now. But I was doing a little looking around on their website because their website is so well formatted. And I found that you can actually submit a wee form of what type of recommendations you're looking for and one of the booksellers will have a look for you and get back to you with some recommendations. It's called Mr B's Recommendation Station. That's what we're going to be doing today. So fill in the three questions below along with your name and email address and our book experts will be in touch soon with their personal recommendations. Okay so let's put in my name and my email address and then what type of genre or book are you in the mood for? I think I'm going to put in thriller. Thrillers are one of my favourite genres but out of the genres I enjoy I know the least about them. I'm less knowledgeable about what books are coming out in that genre so I think like if I put fantasy or romance it's more likely that I would know the recommendations. I think putting thriller I'm more likely to get some fun surprises. What were the last three books that you really enjoyed? See for this one I'm not sure if I should put the last three thrillers I really enjoyed or just last three books in general I really enjoyed because then they would get a insight of what I like. Right I'm gonna put Rouge definitely because that's kind of thrillery but then I don't know oh I do know what I'm gonna put. Uh, what's it called? I'm gonna put the Echo Man. Should I put the author names as well? I mean, they'll definitely know what I'm talking about, but... And then, what should be my third one? I don't want to go pure off the rails from Thriller. I did really like the push, actually. I gave that four stars. I liked things have gotten worse since we last spoke a lot. Should I put Spells for Forgetting? Because that's, that's quite mystery. I'm gonna put Spells for Forgetting. Okay, I don't know if they would have preferred if I'd put three full-on thrillers in my recent books I've enjoyed list. I think it's a bit more fun to put like not all thrillers so they can kind of get a more broader sense of what I like because then maybe there's really fun fantasy thriller. I want them to know that I do like fantasy too. Okay so I put Rouge by Mona Awad which is more of like a gothic fairy tale. It's more horror-y than thrillery really. The Echo Man by Sam Holland which is full-on thriller. I loved that book last year. That kind of got me back into reading thrillers. And then I put Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young, which I loved so much. It's like romance, witchy mystery, but I don't think it's too far away from thriller that they're gonna be like, why the hell does she want us to recommend her a thriller? I hope. <laughs> and then the third question, what would you most like to reread from your existing book collection? That's a really hard question. <laughs> I think my gut is telling me Piranesi right now. Sienna agrees. 
There's tons I'd want to reread for the first time. Oh, it's not saying for the first time. What would you most like to reread from your existing book collection? It doesn't necessarily mean for the first time. I'm, I think I'm gonna put Piranesi. I'm happy with that. Okay, choose me some reads. Thanks for using our recommendation station. One of our book experts at Mr. Bees and Bath will come up with some recommendations for you and get back to you as soon as possible. Cool. So I don't know when they'll get back to me. It might be a bit of a wait. I don't know how quick they'll be, but I'm excited to see what they say. And then once they give me my recommendations, I'll head into Bath and I'll go to Mr. Bees and I'll buy the books from them. So I'm not just making use of their lovely service and then going off to Amazon or Waterstones and buying from there. I want to support them. And then I'll read them in this video and hopefully we get some good books. So it's the next day and I already have an email back from Mr. B's. I was not expecting them to get back to me so quickly. So I am really excited. Though I bet I click on this email after setting up my camera and everything and it's just going to be like maybe a further question or something. <laughs> But let's see, let's find out. Hello Catherine, thank you very much for your recommendations request form. I have created a list of some great thrillers that the Mr. B's team have enjoyed. Some have a slightly otherworldly twist to them, which based on your recent reading, I think you would like. Oh my god, I made the right decision of putting in some like, not really thrillery books, but just so they get my vibe. You can view the books here and then they've attached a link. If you purchase the bundle, there is a discount automatically applied at discount. Hopefully these books appeal. If you have already read some or my suggestions are off the mark, then please don't hesitate to get back in touch for some new recommendations. Happy reading. Best wishes, Katrina. So not only did they get in touch. Hold on. This email got to me at three o'clock yesterday. I just haven't checked my emails until this morning. They got back to me in like four or five hours incredible. They've sent me a personalised link of my recommendations. They're giving me a discount, I don't know how much, off the bundle if I purchase it. And if I've already read the books or don't agree with the suggestions, I can get back in touch. This, for, like, this is a free service. Like, obviously they're expecting you to hopefully buy the books from them. I love this bookshop. That is an incredible service. Right. Let's click. Should I start screen recording this actually? Okay, let's find out what books have been recommended to me. Recommendation station for Catherine Bailey, curated by Katrina Clark. Get 15% off when you buy all the books on the list. Okay, so all books on this list come to £75.94 and with the discount it comes to £64.54. So you only get the discount if you buy all of the books and I don't know if I have the money to do that, unfortunately. But let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> okay, I've heard of The Book of Doors and The Last House on Needless Street. My sister might have that. Or am I making that up? I don't know. Rest of these, I'm immediately drawn to the cover of Hokey Pokey and Other Women. Let's go through them and see what they're about. Other Women by Emma Flint hasn't come out yet. Okay, so it's published on 7th of March 2024. Okay, so I'll read Mr. B's review, which is from Sue. Sue was almost late for work because she wanted to finish this stylish, gripping true crime novel. After the Great War, many women were left unmarried and invisible, forced to make their own way in a grief-stricken world. Beatrice is one such woman, unknowingly ripe for seduction, and Tom Ryan is the man set to pursue her. But Tom is married to Kate, and joy is followed by tragedy. Tom finds himself on trial for a murder he swears he did not commit. This is a devastating story of obsession and lies in which the author seduces the reader too. Interesting, interesting. I'm not big on war fiction, to be honest. And sometimes I struggle with historical fiction if it's not got a bit fancy in it. Let's see what the next one is. The Grief House by Rebecca Thorne. Everyone is lying, but the dead know the truth. A week-long grief retreat on a beautiful country estate with no phones and no Wi-Fi isn't ex-tarot reader Blue's usual getaway. But ever since her mother's death, she's been carrying a secret. Could this finally help her let it go? When she arrives, it's raining and there's something strange about the house. Only a few guests have made it through the weather. As the owners, Molly and Joshua, try desperately to cling to normality, the storm worsens until they're stranded in the house, cut off from the outside world. And after one of the guests disappears in the night, Blue wonders who around her, the parks and the guests, is telling the truth about why they're there and whose grief might be hiding a deeper secret. The flood water rises. Everyone is keeping secrets, but only one is a killer. Can Blue escape with her life and her sanity. 
I'm much more drawn to this book immediately. I like that it's confined into one house during a storm so they're stuck inside. That's going to add a lot of tension to it I think. The fact that it's a grief retreat is really interesting to me. I like the side of this one a lot. Next we've got The Book of Doors which I have heard of and I've seen the cover of before but I don't really know that much about it. This is by Gareth Brown and the description reads because some doors should never be opened. New York bookseller Cassie Andrews is not sure what she's doing with her life. She lives quietly, sharing an apartment with her best friend Izzy. Then a favourite customer gives her an old book. Full of strange writing and mysterious drawings, at the very front there is a handwritten message. This is the book of doors. Hold it in your hand and any door is every door. Cassie is about to discover that the book of doors is a special book, a magic book, a book that bestows extraordinary abilities on whoever possesses it. And she's about to learn that there are other magic books out there that can also do wondrous or dreadful and terrifying things. Because where there is magic, there is power, and there are those who will stop at nothing to possess it. Suddenly, Cassie and Izzy are confronted by violence and danger, and the only person who can help them is Drummond Fox, who has a secret library of magical books hidden in the shadows for safekeeping. A man fleeing his own demons, because there is a nameless evil out there that is hunting them all. Because this book is worth killing for. Yeah, I am into that. That speaks to my fantasy loving heart. Sounds like there's a good mystery going on in there as well. I also think the cover of that book is stunning. Next we've got Hokey Pokey which is the cover out of all of these that I'm most drawn to because it's giving me very 1920s Great Gatsby like flappers vibe. This is by Kate Mascarenas. Oh and this has not been released yet either. This is to be published on the 14th of March 2024. So the description for this book is that it begins as a compelling psychological mystery and turns to the supernatural, a well-plotted original nightmare blend of madness and monsters. The Regent Hotel in Birmingham is a place of lush glamour where guests sip absinthe cocktails on velvet banquets and obliging waiters are always on hand, yet behind its glittering facade you might find monsters lurking in the shadows. On a cold February evening, Nora Dickinson checks in. A psychoanalyst with a dubious past, Nora has battled not to let her own demons overcome her, but when a terrible snowstorm cuts the region off from the outside world, the entire hotel's grip on reality slips and the nightmares Nora's worked so hard to control begin to bare their teeth. Oh my god, so another stuck in one building because of a storm scenario but this time it's a hotel. Yes, yes, I really like the sound of this one. Really like the sound of this one. The next recommendation is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. I'm gonna check my sister's story graph because I'm pretty sure that she might have read this. Let's do a bit of cyber stalking on my sister. Yes, Lizzie has read this and she gave it 4.5. Has she lent it to me? She might have lent it to me. I'm gonna check that in a minute because this might be downstairs. So the description for this book is this is the story of a murderer, a stolen child, revenge. This is the story of Ted, who lives with his young daughter, Lauren, and his cat, Olivia, in an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street. All these things are true, and yet some of them are lies. An unspeakable secret binds the family together, and when a new neighbour moves in next door, the truth may destroy them all, because there's something buried in the dark forest at the end of Needless Street but it's not what you think. This sounds more gothic. In the questionnaire they sent me, books that I read recently, I put Rouge, and this sounds like more of that vibe. Probably a bit more thrillery, it sounds like, but yes, I like the sound of that, and I might have it downstairs. I'm gonna go check in a minute. And then finally, the last recommendation is Good Girl, Bad Girl by Michael Robotham. This cover seems very like um, a cover that I would imagine a thriller being. I'm not always drawn to covers like this and I think that's where my trouble is because I really enjoy thrillers but I don't really like traditional thriller covers even though I probably would love what's on the inside. I just don't find myself wanting to pick them up because I'm like your cover's not in intriguing enough to me. The description for this book is The Girl With No Past. Six years ago, Evie Cormack was discovered filthy and half-starved, hiding in a secret room in the aftermath of a shocking crime. Now approaching adulthood, Evie is damaged, self-destructive, and has never revealed her true identity. 
The Boy Who Survived, forensic psychologist Cyrus Haven, a man hunted by his own past, is investigating the death of champion figure skater Jodie Sheehan. When Cyrus is called upon to assess Evie, she threatens to disrupt the case and destroy his ordered life. Because Evie has a unique and dangerous gift, she knows when someone is lying and nobody is telling the truth. It sounds like the most traditional thrillery thrillery out of all of these books. Bear with me a sec. Now I'm going to go see if I have the copy of The Last House on the Street downstairs. I do! Thank you to my sister Lizzie because she clearly has good taste. That decides one book for us then because obviously Lizzie thinks I should read it and now this is the second time I've been recommended it by a professional bookseller. So definitely going to read this book. I went into this video thinking I would read three books but because I've already got one book now I may as well read four because I went in with the intention of buying three books so I may as well still buy the three books, support this local bookshop that deserves the support. If I had more money I would definitely get all of the books and get the 15% discount by the bundle. Hello Sienna but I don't have more money so I am going to limit myself to the three three books plus reading The House on Needless Street which is already on my bookshelves. I definitely want to read The Grief House and Hokey Pokey. Now it's between Book of Doors and Good Girl, Bad Girl. I like the sound of reading a pure, pure thriller and The Book of Doors I've heard of before and it sounds more fantasy leaning and I can see myself probably coming back to this in the future anyway. I think that makes sense because I'll probably come back to The Book of Doors by Gareth Brown in the future anyway. For this video I think I'll go for Good Girl, Bad Girl because I wanted a thriller. This sounds the most traditionally thriller out of all of the books. It sounds like a book that I wouldn't pick up for myself based on the cover but that I would probably really enjoy the actual substance of. So yes, we're settled. I'm going to read The Grief House by Rebecca Thorne, Hokey Pokey by Kate Mascarenhas, The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward and Good Girl, Bad Girl by Michael Robotham. So I acquired all four of the books that I needed to read and I have read them all now and I'm going to tell you what I think about them. I started off with Good Girl Bad Girl by Michael Robotham and I ended up giving this four out of five stars which is such a strong start. As I suspected this was definitely the most thrillery out of all of the books that I read and that was what I loved most about it. It was hitting all of those familiar detective thriller beats that I enjoy while still putting a fresh spin on things, mainly through the writing style and narrative choices that Michael Robotham makes. The book is told through two characters' perspectives, criminal psychologist Cyrus Haven and a young adult, Evie, who has a really troubling past, has no family and is under the care of the government, basically. And it's their relationship that is the heart of this book. They meet because one of the adults at the home that Evie is staying at asks Cyrus to come and work with her in therapy. Cyrus himself has his own really traumatised childhood experience and because Evie has this gift of knowing when someone is lying or not, she immediately has this kind of trust towards Cyrus that she doesn't have with anyone else. And so these two characters' backgrounds and their relationship together were definitely my favourite part about this book. And I discovered that this is actually the first book in a series of books. I think there's two other books out so far following Cyrus and Evie's relationship and I'm assuming other crimes but I think the the author has set up their backstories to have more weight in future books because we we kind of know the rough idea about what has happened to them in their past, Cyrus more so, but the author has left a lot of room to play with their stories and a lot of things that still need to be revealed to us, which is very exciting. The reason this didn't get a full five stars for me was because the main plot of this book is Cyrus is working with the police to find the killer of a teenage figure skater, but that 
kind of took a back seat for me in terms of what I was interested in. I was way more interested in Cyrus and Evie and their past and their backstories, which as I said, is obviously getting set up for future books. But because the murder of this figure skater is supposed to be at the centre of this book, I do think that that should have been the most gripping part of the book to me and it just wasn't. So that's why this didn't get a full five stars, but this was so, so enjoyable. If you're looking for a good classic detective thriller to get into, I would highly recommend this and it's perfect if you want a series as well because you'll have three books to get through. I've not read the next two yet, but I am definitely hoping to as soon as possible basically. Following on from that book, I read Hokey Pokey by Kate Mascarenas. This was my favourite cover out of all of the books recommended to me, but it ended up being my least favourite book out of the four that I read. I rated this three stars and this was quite an interesting one for me to kind of wrap my head around how I felt about it because overall I really loved the plot of this book. There were a lot of elements in this book that I love to read about. There was a kind of gothic fairy tale-esque feeling to it, specifically during a section in the middle which takes place in our main character's childhood. We also have an unreliable narrator, we have a strange mystery that takes place in a setting where the characters are isolated to, which I love. And it's also got supernatural horror in it. These are all things I really, really like to read about. The thing that I didn't enjoy about this book was the writing style, basically. The way this is written, it felt to me while I was reading it as if the writing style was quite detached. I think that style did really make sense for who our narrator was and what her story was. But because of this particular choice, it felt to me like the book lacked like an emotional heart to the voice. The experience of a plot that I really like in theory and I liked reading the beats of just fell a bit flat for me. And also because there was that lack of emotion, I found it really hard to connect with any of the characters on any deep level. That being said, I still gave this book three stars, which I think is quite good. I really liked the plot. I really liked the concept. And I think with the writing style, even though it didn't work for me, I do understand the choice of it. And I think I can really appreciate that this was just a personal preference on my part that it didn't work with. Like the story of this has stayed with me since reading it. I do remember a lot of this particular scenes that happen in it. There's a lot of really good horror in this that I can still see in my head. So it has had a lasting impact, but it just wasn't the most enjoyable read for me. And next went on to read The Grief House by Rebecca Thorne, which I ended up giving 3.75 stars to. This book is interesting because it has a lot of different moving parts in it. It takes place partly in the present day with our main character Blue, who is attending this grief retreat in the middle of the nowhere during a terrible, terrible storm. It also takes place partly throughout her childhood. So we see Blue from when she's a very young girl living with her mother all the way through her years up until the aftermath of her mother's death and the push to her booking this grief retreat. And then we also are getting chapters throughout from different characters' point of view both in the present, in the grief retreat, and in the past. So there's a lot of different character storylines going on that all eventually intersect towards the end. And whilst this book was a bit of a slow start for me, I ended up really enjoying it because there is a reveal in the first act that hooked me and drew me in really intensely. There's a part that happens that when you realise the truth of it, it's kind of like a oh moment. don't want to spoil anything about this book, but I will say that it's not what I expected. There's quite a big element of it that from reading the blurb, I didn't get that that was going to be the vibe of this book. Once I kind of realised what the vibe was, it was a bit jarring at first, but once I like rewired my brain to kind of accept that this was what 
the book was doing. I was able to sit back and relax and enjoy it a bit more. And I do get why the blurb doesn't allude to this aspect of the book. It is quite a fun thing to discover on your own. I think the big strength of this book is the author's ability to kind of hop from character to character at specific points during the book as a tool to build tension. There's one specific character who we get the point of view of throughout, who was my favourite point of view whenever we had a chapter with them. I knew that we were in for some creepiness and for some real weirdness, which I love. This didn't quite end up being a four star read for me though, because at times I thought the pacing was a little bit off. There were some scenes throughout that I was reading that were good scenes, but I felt like they would be way more impactful and effective if they had been shortened. And I also felt like the reveal at the end for the big mystery was a little bit anticlimactic, but it was a very fun read. And finally, I read The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. And boy oh boy did I save the best till last. This was 4.5 stars for me, maybe 4.75 stars. It was so close to five stars. Oh my god. So from the cover of this book, I think it feels like more horror than thriller. I know there there can be quite a, a fine line between the two, but this turned out to be way more thrillery than I initially thought. It is the most psychological thriller out of all four of the books. I think psychological thrillers are my favourite, but I do think it does lean quite heavily into horror as well at certain points throughout, which I adored. This book is told from a number of perspectives. We've got a woman whose sister was kidnapped when her sister was six years old and she was kind of pre-teen teenager. And this woman is trying to find out what happened to her younger sister. Then we've got the perspective of a man called Ted who is kind of a recluse and who this woman suspects kidnapped her sister. We've also got the perspective of the sister who was kidnapped. Her name is Lauren. And then we also, most interestingly, have the perspective of Ted's cat whose name is Olivia. This book was so, so tense and at points so terrifying. The author did such a good job at utilising all of these differing perspectives to reinforce this specific narrative and truth in the reader's head as they're reading, only to, at some point in the book, pull the rug completely out from under you, make you rethink everything that you've believed. It's like complete slap in the face, whiplash. Again, like The Grief House, this book took me a little bit longer to get into, but once I was in, I was absolutely hooked. Couldn't stop reading, couldn't put the book down, didn't talk to Alex for hours. Kind of hooked. There is an afterword at the end by the author explaining her thought process of writing the book, the kind of research she did to write the book, which I found really interesting to read. And the only reason this book didn't get five stars for me was because towards the end of the book, when all of these big reveals are happening and it was so exciting and so tense, it did start to get a little bit confusing at points of when we're switching perspectives and figuring out what time were in. I was having to like go back and just double check where I was at certain points. That was the only thing I could think that was wrong with it. It was otherwise perfect to me and I would read again definitely. One of my new favourites. I loved it so so much. So how did Mr V's do with recommending me thrillers. I think it's safe to say they did an amazing job. There was not a book that was under three stars and I think that is really really good. I could tell that they clearly took on board the kind of books I liked from the form that I had filled out online because the books that they recommended me were all, all fell into the thriller genre at varying levels, sure. But they gave me a variety of thrillers that kind of dipped into different subgenres within that genre, which I really appreciate. They knew from the books that I listed that I enjoyed, that I quite like fantasy and magical realism and touches of supernatural and horror. So they really took on board like my personal preferences and they really delivered on things that I really enjoy reading. And I've come away with two 
favorite books, definitely. I loved Good Girl, Bad Girl, and I loved, loved, loved The Last House on Needless Street. And I'm so excited as well because Good Girl, Bad Girl is the first book in a series. So they've introduced me to a new series that I'm hopefully gonna love as well. Honestly, I am so impressed by this service that they do online for free. I mean, obviously they expect you to, if you're gonna buy the books and take on the recommendations, buy from them. I think that's like the decent thing to do. But this whole process is just so bespoke and tailored to your personal preferences. The email and the book recommendations I got from Katrina were so personalized and fit for me. So it felt really special doing it and exciting. I like that there was no pressure on on having to buy all the books, but they did give you an incentive to buy all of the books with the discount. I loved that I was given the opportunity to have a back and forth with the bookseller if I didn't agree with a recommendation and I wanted them to do a new one, or if I'd already read one of the books, they wanted to have a conversation about books, but I didn't need to use that because their recommendations were also on point and I hadn't read any of them and it was great. The response as well was so quick. I was not expecting them to get back to me within a day, let alone within a few hours, which they did. I think the thing that I really appreciate most about it is that, like I said at the beginning of the video, when you walk into this bookshop, you feel this kind of personal touch to everything. You feel like these booksellers are really passionate about their work and books and talking about books and giving recommendations. But not everyone is confident. There's a lot of people who are shy or have social anxiety or just can't bring themselves to approach someone or don't want to be approached in person. And that's fine everyone is so different. So I think it's just so special that they on their website have provided a service in which you can still have this special experience without having to experience like the anxiety of talking to someone face to face if that's not something that you're comfortable with. I think that's so important and lovely and this whole experience has been incredible. This is one of my favourite videos I've ever done if not the favourite. I had so much fun and I can't thank Mr. Bees and Katrina especially from Mr. Bees enough for giving me these recommendations and introducing me to so many good books. I definitely can see myself using this service again in the future. It was so easy. Their website is so well formatted. I just really can't recommend this bookshop enough. If ever you're in Bath, please go visit it and give it some love. It's amazing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!